Welcome back to Dallas, Texas. Up next, Southern Miss. They are, of course, the defending champion in the West, and they are picked to win the West again this season. And joining us, the head coach in his first year and former Southern Miss assistant, Jay Hobson. Jay, good to have you back good again. Good to be here, Ron. Thanks for having us. We're going to be talking to you in just a minute. Also, Nick Mullins here to my left, the starting quarterback. He was Conference USA Co-Offensive Player of the Year last season, and he's the preseason Offensive Player of the Year. Pretty good stuff there, big guy. And also C.J. Perry, a linebacker for Southern Miss. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. You know, Jay, you and I were just talking about how special it is to come back to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Your children were born there. Talk about the feeling you got when you knew you had the job and you were going back to a place that's had such an impact on your life, both on and off the field. Uh, just a special feeling. It was just a, uh, you know, it, it's a place that um, I've fallen in love with and my, my wife's fallen in love with and, and uh, you know it's a tradition. I've been blessed. You know, I coached for Jeff Bauer for six years mm -hmm. and, and he's a guy that I learned a lot under and I was GA for Curly Holman who was another legendary coach at Southern Miss. Coach Carmody actually recruited me out of high school. Big Nasty himself, <laughs> the originator of the Nasty Bunch. So uh, I've been blessed. Uh, to have uh, Southern Miss guys in my life for a long time and, and uh, just, just to uh, come back and uh, be at Southern Miss in Hattiesburg is a true blessing for me. Well, you're, you're coming from Alcorn State where you were very successful, obviously back-to-back -back conference championships. What did that teach you about what it takes to be a head coach going along with what Jeff taught you and Curly and everybody else taught you? Well, I think we're all kind of, um, you know, we're all we learn from all our, our mentors and, and uh, your experiences in life. And I think, uh, you know, just being a head coach, uh, there's things that you learn uh, that you don't mm -hmm. learn as an assistant coach. And I think that's one of the, the great things at Alcorn that happened to go through that for four years. We were a team very similar to where we were two to three years ago. We were at the bottom of the conference and, and uh, we fought our way up to be the conference champs. And, and uh, that's something that I love about this football team, these players. Uh, you know, three years ago it was zero, then one wins, then three wins, then nine wins, and and this football team has been battling, and I think that's uh, it's a, it's just a blessing to be a part of that, and, and you know our goal, like every team's goal, is to finish that journey. You Southern Miss matched Washington State for the biggest improvement as far as wins last season. You're coming into a team that obviously had an incredible year last year. You know, finishing finishing the way they did. Some coaches would shy away from that, like, boy, that's a lot of pressure to keep that success going. But you have it. You've embraced it. Yeah, you know, this is Southern Miss. And, you know, I've been a part of 15 win teams. I've been a part of one win team, teams. So uh, I've, I've kind of been through that gauntlet of being told I was great and being told I was horrible. The reality <laughs> is, is this is Southern Miss. This is my love and my passion. These players that chose to go to school here, they love and they have a passion. And you know, we want to be a team that competes for championships every year. You know, it's Southern Miss, that's a tradition that goes beyond my birth. And so at the end of the day, I, I think just to be a part of that tradition again is what fired me up. And, and just I'm blessed to be with these guys. You know, they're battlers. They've already proven that. We just got to continue the fight. Let's talk about your offense. Shannon Dawson is your offensive coordinator. He is well versed, shall we say, in the air raid offense. How much tweaking is done or how much change is done from what they were playing with before? I think there's always a subtle change, but there's a lot of similarity too. And I think there's one thing, uh, you know, one thing that I wanted and um, is having a quarterback the caliber of Nick. Uh, you know, I've been around a lot of quarterbacks. I've been around. Uh, some first rounders, and I say this openly and publicly, Nick throws the ball better than any quarterback I've been around. Uh, but I wanted to make the transition as smooth as possible for our quarterbacks, because football and offense is a quarterback driven game. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was important. Uh, you know, so uh, that's something defensively, you know, I think the thing we started out talking about was just the old school tradition of Southern Miss, you know, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, that transition with Shannon to Nick and uh, was a was an easy and smooth one. Shannon's an outstanding football coach, uh, has a proven track record and a guy that I just fell in love with when I interviewed him. Let's talk about defense and I will get to you guys, I, I, I promise, but I want to talk about your defense. Are you going to be more of a multiple scheme this year? Than last season, we'll, we'll do kind of what we've always done. You know, we, we're uh, we're we are multiple, and I like to say that it's a multiple forty. But you know, it's a Southern Miss. It's a style that we've played at Southern Miss before, 
and uh, it's a style we'll continue to play. Uh, Tony Pecoraro, our defense coordinator, does a tremendous job as our coordinator, and uh, we have a lot of experience on that side of the ball. Tim Billings, Danny Dish, Derek Nicholson, there's a lot of coaches that have been around, and uh, we're blessed to have that knowledge, and uh, Tony just does a tremendous, tremendous job. Talk about defensive tackle because you lost two start, starting defensive tackles from last season to graduation. How do you fill those holes and who fills those holes? Well, it's the next guy up. And that's the beautiful thing about football <laughs> is, is there's guys that graduate at certain positions and now the next guy's got to step up. You know, we talked about it on the offensive side some uh, earlier today. I mean, whether it's receiver, whether it's running back, whether it's defensive tackle, you know, the next guy up has got to step up. And uh, we got some outstanding players that are working hard and it's their time to shine. And uh, that's the challenge. Well, I want to talk to CG, obviously. Talk about the defense this year and the adjustments that have been made. Uh, I think the adjustments been made um, pretty pretty well. Um, I think everyone went in with a with an attacking mindset, you know, to learn a whole new defense. Um, it was. It's some of the things that we that we was already doing. It may be just different languages, and I think everyone has really went in with an attacking mindset. Played in seven games last year. What's your goal this season? Uh, my goal is just to really just not only improve myself, but try to help um, the Southern Miss defense, you know, get back to where it was, um, and you know, to help the help the help the whole team get back to the conference championship. I want to talk to Nick here because we were chatting before we, we started the segment and I said I want to relay a story. I went to your practice on Thursday and sometimes Thursday practices a little loosey-goosey at times. They can be. You got mad at players and were walking around slapping guys, you don't even remember this, slapping guys on the, on the helmet saying concentrate on this practice, concentrate on this practice. And when I talked to the coaching staff after they said you have increased your leadership role last season. You've doubled it. They were impressed with that. Uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, part of it comes naturally as a quarterback, but um, part of it just is a matter of wanting to be the best. And uh, so I think to do that, you have to hold your players to a high standard, and uh, that's what we do at Southern Miss. Are you a vocal person normally, though? Because the coaches told me that wasn't really your character to be really vocal. <laughs> um, I've probably gotten a little bit more vocal as I've grown older. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to realize your role on a team, no matter whether it's, you know, a young freshman or an older uh, senior leader. And uh, so I think that's one thing that's been good this offseason is uh, the seniors have been able to show their leadership. All the accolades you got last year, obviously, and this year, Conference USA Preseason <coughs> Player of the Year. Doesn't matter? Uh, I've really just tried to focus on this year. You know, Coach Hobb tells us uh, every year is a new journey, and, uh, you know, it's all about the 2016 Southern Miss football team. And uh, so for us to be able to focus on that and um, really just improve, work hard, and uh, build trust in our teammates for this year is uh, what really matters. Every quarterback I think I've talked to in my career always had something specifically. They go back and they look at tapes and they said, I didn't do this well in this situation. I didn't do this well. Did you do that? And if so, what, what did you want to improve on this season? Uh, one thing for me is always just uh, protecting the ball. I mean, you know, obviously I did a little bit better job of it last year, but uh, you can always improve. I've always been a believer that uh, whoever wins a turnover battle is uh, most of the time going to win the game. So uh, really just getting the offense in the right play, being confident in that play, um, protecting the ball, and then at the end of the day, executing. That's what offensive football is all about, and uh, whoever executes the best is uh, going to be the team that wins. Well, I, I look at, at the loss. One of, one of them, obviously, is Jalen Richard, the running back, who was outstanding. When you had Richard and Edo Smith back there, it was a heck of a one-two punch. But you still have Edo back there. That is a very special player. Yes, sir. Yeah, Ito, um, you know, he's a great player, a uh, great guy off the field. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, if you know Ito, he doesn't talk a lot, but all he, do, <laughs> all he, all he does is work hard. Uh, you know, it, he does everything that he's uh, asked to do and uh, is a great team player and um, fulfills all of his responsibilities as a running back. Talk about Ito, Coach. Just, uh, you know, a dynamic football player. Uh, Ito, again, I think is a next level running back. Uh, he's a guy that has extreme quickness, uh, great vision, burst, accelerates through the whole well and, and uh, you know to me he, he's that back you know he he runs harder too uh, than his frame. You know, he, he's an all-around back and uh, just a guy that we're gonna count on to make a lot of plays for us. You know a, a lot of people look and say okay they're only bringing back one of their top three receivers but when I started going back and looking at the numbers you have a lot of receivers back that have played a lot 
and have the experience to step right in. Well, that's what we have to do. It's kind of like we talked about the defensive tackles, those young receivers or those guys that it's their time, you know, and uh, they've got to step up and, uh, you know, certainly uh, the talent is there. Guys got to step up and, you know, pick up that slack from Mike and Casey and, and uh we always like to talk about, hey, that might be 70% of the receiving production. Let's go be 75%. You know, let's gain five more percent on it. So those guys understand what they got to do, and everybody's working hard. So it's, uh, it's, it's great to watch that competition unfold to see who the, those guys will be. When you were in spring, is there something that you had a, an idea, a perception of that wasn't true, and you came out of spring saying, you know, we're pretty good here, or not, whatever? Not, not really. I think I'm all about the fight. And I think I admired, I knew these guys, just like we talked about earlier, the zero to one to three to nine. I knew this was a football team that, that had some competitors on it and were fighting, and, and uh, I'm just glad to be a part of that. You know, that's what Southern Miss football is about, and that's kind of our tradition. And, you know, we're going to go out there and, and play Southern Miss football for 60 minutes, and hopefully good things happen at the end, that scoreboard <laughs> says the right things. But the reality is, as long as we're, we're fighting and battling like these guys have been, Hey, I'm fine. One thing that, and, and I hate to bring up anything negative, but I thought special teams last year at times a little bit uneven, shall we say, from field goal kicking to even punting. In fact, I think there was only uh, one fair catch in 45 punts last season. How much effort was put on to improve that part of the, the special teams and, and that part well, of the Well, we're working very hard on special teams. I'm a special teams guy. I mean, that's something that uh, is very important to my heart. Played special teams, but... Uh, uh, Coach Wozniak, John Wozniak, our special teams coordinator, and, and uh, you know, the kicking game is something we emphasize. And uh, certainly, uh, we understand its importance in ball games. So we've got to be good in that phase to be successful and achieve our goals. A lot of players don't like to set goals. You already set a lot of records last season. So do you set goals for this coming season? I think it's more of a group effort. Uh, you know, I've always kind of believed in the team first, and. Um, Probably a lot of teams out there have the same goals, you know, your division championship, conference championship, bowl game. But it's really just uh, the difference of uh, how teams go about those goals. And, uh, you know, Southern Miss done a great job of really just uh, keeping a competitive mindset every day in workouts, uh, working hard every day, growing with the receivers, uh, you know, molding as a unit on the offense. And I think that's how uh, we're going to be at our best and achieve those goals. CJ, how about you? Any goals for this season? Uh, mine's really the same as Nick. Uh, just try to get better as a unit, um, try to get better as a defense, um, try to be as as one. Um, one thing Coach Hop has brought to to the table for us is every time we um, about to go on the field, we always break it down on 11 brothers. Um, so that means it's not just one player who's going to win us the game. It's going to take all 11. Coach, goals? Just, uh, you know, I think the goals uh, – always or you know we want to be a program that year in and year out and this year is no exception that competes for championships i think that's uh that's always the goal and as far as, as long as that bl black and gold helmet's out there that's going to be the goal so that's uh you know that's something and we understand it's a hard fight each week we got to be ready a lot of great football teams in our conference and our non-conference schedule is always tough and we understand we got to be prepared and uh, we know it's going to be a battle every saturday uh, here's probably one of the goals he may have because it is yours as defensive coordinator at Southern Miss. Your team's led Conference USA in scoring defense. Well, I'm a head coach now, so I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. No, 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 no. I, I don't. Like you're still going to keep an eye I'm on a, that I'm, defense. A, I'm kind of a. I'm kind of a different bird. I really am. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, sometimes the defensive guys think I favor the offense, and the offensive guys think I favor the defense, but. Uh, I'm like a double agent. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of, um, you know, my biggest thing is to make sure both sides are successful. And I, I really have, I kind of traded in that uh, defensive card four years ago. So uh, at the was end that of hard day, to do? You know what it really was. And I was an old high school quarterback, and uh, I think it, uh, <laughs> I wasn't good enough to play college quarterback. But at the end of the day, I think there's there's always been some offensive blood running through me too. <laughs> Is he telling the truth, you think? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just no want to check. No doubt. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much, Jay. Good to have you All back right. at the conference again. Outstanding talking to you. And anytime you want to take me to Letha's Barbecue when I come back to have <laughs> You're welcome anytime. You're, you're, you're welcome, more than Ron. welcome. Thank All you, right. gentlemen. Thanks, Ron. We'll step thank aside you. on the other side. We'll bring Middle Tennessee into focus and talk about their season. Stay with us.